Hello everybody, it's me, An Exotic Llama, coming back for day three of five uh, for my daily build guides in preparation for Path of Exile 3.0, which is coming out in just a few days. Uh, actually, now uh, just about 48 hours, I do believe. Uh, and today, I'm coming to you with an RF build guide. It is an RF champion. Uh, and this is actually a build that a friend of mine is planning on playing. Uh, it looks to be a pretty decent mapper and a pretty good uh, uber lab farmer. Maybe even an uber adziri or shaper farmer if you get really good levels of gear. Uh, so let's get into it. Uh, basically, uh, because you're building RF, you just want to stack a lot of life and a lot of max fire resistance. Uh, and because of this, it's going to be a fairly tanky character, so he picked a juggernaut. Uh, specifically because endurance charges will give 0.2% life regen per endurance charge and uh, Juggernaut right here is really good at generating endurance charges uh, So 30% chance to gain an endurance charge when you are hit and plus one max endurance charges It's stacking even more life regen and uh, Getting some extra armor from these other nodes uh, then 8% reduced elemental damage taken while at max endurance charges really helps with the uh, uh, mitigating RF, 6% increased damage per endurance charge, just to scale up your actual damage, and a 25% chance, which I think is now 30, uh, that if you would gain endurance charges, you instead gain up to your maximum number of endurance charges. Uh, so it means basically, every single time this rolls, there's a 1 in 4, or like a 1 in 3 chance uh, that you shoot straight up to your max endurance charges. And basically, they're permanent. You keep them on all the time. Uh, then you get some extra life regen here, some more armor and move speed. Then right here, you get a 30% increased damage while you have Fortify, 1.5% life regen while you have Fortify, and 25% increased effect of Fortify, which also helps at mitigating other types of damage, uh, not specifically what you're doing to yourself through RF. And then right here, you cannot be slowed to base speed, 10% increased move speed, and movement speed cannot be modified to below base value. Uh, this means you don't need a freeze flask, you don't need chill removal, you're immune to chilled ground, uh, you're immune to temporal chains maps. It's just absolutely uh, fantastic. Actually, it makes temporal chains maps buff you uh, in the end because it makes all of your effects last longer, so your endurance charges will tick down slower and uh, it'll help you sustain them a little bit more. Though you really don't need help with that because you're a juggernaut. Uh, so, if I go over to the tree, of course, it's a Marauder. Uh, he picks up life, life, some life regen in here, right here. And uh, he doesn't pick up this node for life regen, even though you can if you really want to. Uh, in the end, it's only like an extra 55 life regen, as it says. Uh, but if you feel that's worth it, you can pick that up instead of the life node. You know, do whatever you want. Uh, then you get a lot of strength, and strength really helps you scale your damage uh, later on. Uh, Initially, because it gives you life per strength, but then later on you can switch to a Dune Kubiari and just straight up scale your damage with strength. Uh, then he also picks up Combat Stamina here for extra armor, extra life regen in all of these nodes. Uh, then there's some life regen here, some extra life, uh, and the AoE nodes here, which are optional, ultimately. Um, but I think it, it feels pretty good to have them, in my opinion. Uh... Then he will go uh, generally over to the Scion Life Wheel, but you can pick that up whenever you'd like. Uh, you can go up here for some life, another Endurance Charge, life and plus one max Fire Res, which is really important. Uh, the Endurance Charge and the Life Regen per Endurance Charge. Then some extra life and lots of armor. Down here you get some more life. Enemies cannot leech from you, which is pretty nifty. Uh, then, you know, Life Regen, life, Life Regen, life. Another endurance charge, and uh, this node might even be worth taking to some. The extra attack speed is really nice for shield charge. And uh, yeah, and then you come over here, you get some life regen, mana regen, life regen and the jewel sockets come up, life and mana regen, and extra life. Then fire damage and burning damage, which is ultimately what RF does. Uh, now this build also uses scorching ray to up its dot DPS. Uh, but if you go over here, just looking at RF alone, uh, you're dealing 235k damage 
around you, and uh, let me see if that is with Conk. Yes, that's with Conk. Without it, uh, you go down to 150k, which is still pretty reasonable for map clearing, uh, but if you're going to be killing bosses, you need that 235k, and then you can pop over to Scorching Ray, which is 235k damage as well, and it uh, increases the damage of your Righteous Fire by removing enemy fire resistance. Uh, so let's go into the items now. Um, you're going to have an essence crafted uh, fingerless silk gloves aren't necessary. You can use any base type that you want, uh, but that does just buff your scorching ray a little bit more. Uh, they're going to be essence crafted gloves using hysteria, I believe. And uh, you also have an essence crafted helmet from. I should look into what type of uh, essence that is. So if I create a helmet and I go to essences, you're going to use the essence of horror on a helmet and Essence of Hysteria on Gloves, I do believe. Uh, and what those do is it gives you more damage over time on your gloves, and uh, your helmet will be more elemental damage. Now these are exactly the same. You can go back and forth between your Scorching Ray and your RF. It ultimately doesn't matter uh, because they scale exactly the same because of that. Uh, but RF really lacks ways to scale its damage, and getting what is effectively an extra link uh, whenever you don't really have any other link that you could put there, um, really benefits RF. Uh, you're also going to have a Doriani's Catalyst, and that is until uh, you reach a pretty high strength total, and you can switch over to something like a Dune Kubiari. I think it's around uh, 800 strength, if not a little bit more, uh, which is pretty stretch goal. You need a Rise of the Phoenix, uh, it's not a requirement, you can switch out for something else, and it might be worth it, uh, especially if you're trying to mix in some block into your RF build. You could use like a, uh, what's that called, a Saffle's Frame and a Rumi's Concoction as a, as a flask to get you pretty close to a max block, maybe like 50-50. Um, but ultimately, Rise of the Phoenix is going to be better in most cases because of the plus 8 max fire res, it just, it's really good at mitigating the damage you take from RF. Uh, now I've got a rare chest piece on using the uh, like a tier 1 life roll and a tier 1 of the hybrid life rolls uh, that now exist. So it goes up to about 136. Uh, later on you'll probably want to switch this out for a Combs Heart because you gain quite a bit of damage. Uh, you gain quite a bit of life as well. But that's really not necessary. And if you're having trouble uh, maxing your resists, using a rare chest is always an option. Uh, you're sitting at about 7k as is, and if you switch over to something like a Belly of the Beast, uh, you're going to go up a little bit in life, about 160 there, uh, so it's not that big of a difference, but if you end up getting a Combs Heart, that's an extra 1200 life, which puts you uh, well over 8100, probably 8200, and uh, yeah, it's only a level 91 build, so it can scale up quite a bit more. There is always more life on the tree that you can grab, like the Strength node will give you some life, and then... Um, pick up jewel sockets as well and I swear there yeah right here there's some more life nodes uh, tireless right there all right and then uh, onto the rings they're both combs way which is a faded unique uh, version of the comb sign I think it's called uh, it gives you extra life regen per endurance charge a 0.4 percent per ring per endurance charge and uh, then you get the 0.2 percent on the tree so you end up with like 8 or 9 endurance charges, and that's like 8 or 9% life regen, which is pretty significant. Also, they give you a decent amount of life being a coral ring with a strength roll. Uh, then you're really going to need a rare amulet to cover up your dex problems. Um, it's a jade amulet with a dex roll. You want the added cold damage to attacks because it allows you to proc elemental equilibrium, and then you're going to roll life as well. The ad series step are just like a filler. They're a general good to move speed life boost. You can replace it with rare boots to cover up uh, resist problems. Uh, yeah. But uh, you do want elemental equilibrium in this build, which lowers the enemy's uh, resistance to elements that you don't hit with. Uh, so if you add cold damage to your attacks or add lightning damage to your attacks, it lowers the enemy's fire resistance and uh, it allows your RF and your scorching ray to scale quite a bit more. Uh, then I do have a few jewels socketed here, which is some damage over time, fire damage, life, damage over time, fire damage, life, in three spots. 
Uh, you can get an extra run here later on, even here, up here with Ellie damage, um, down here with strength. Uh, that can also help you scale your life total up a little bit uh, as you progress to level 100, but he is planning on using this build, uh, my friend, uh, specifically for farming Uber Lab, so he's not going to bother mapping a ton to continue leveling and get, you know, marginal gains here and there from jewels and extra life. He's just going to be killing his Zaro over and over again to make a lot of currency. Uh, now you go to his flasks, and he's got a Witchfire Brew, which... I mean, there's nothing else that can really go here. Oh, uh, his belt as well is a Belt of the Deceiver, uh, which has a very special mod. Uh, two of them, actually. One is you take 30% reduced extra damage from critical strikes. Uh, so it basically means if you get crit, you are less likely to get one shot. And uh, nearby enemies are intimidated, which makes nearby enemies uh, take 10% more damage uh, from all sources because that's what Intimidate does. Uh, so it's really useful, especially when RF is generally lacking in ways to scale its damage. Putting on something like that just to get 10% more is really valuable. It also gives life, LA res, and strength, which are three good stats. Uh, then you get a Sulfur Flask, which can increase your uh, regeneration if you're standing on the Consecrated Ground. It also increases your damage uh, with a 40% increased damage implicit up there. Uh, then you get a ruby flask because it allows you to regen while you're using RF, actually. It'll uh, bring your fire resist all the way up to 95% while using a ruby, uh, which means you're only taking 5% of that, or uh, what's the word? You're only taking like 5% of your life per second, maybe 4% uh, of your life as fire damage per second, and um, generally you pick up like 20% resist or something funny. Uh, so it gives you a net regen of, like, 1,400 life per second right here. Uh, it'll scale even higher with other forms of the build, or other uh, passives allocated. And there's a quick silver flask of adrenaline to help you run around, and a basalt, of course. Like, a basalt is fantastic at reducing physical damage, especially if you're trying to fight a Zaro. Uh, yeah, so that's what this build is. It's pretty simple to put together. Leveling might be kind of rough. You can't really level with RF too well. Uh, if you want to level with RF, you could always pick up like Mind Over Matter right here. And uh, it reduces 30... Well, it reduces the damage you take from RF by about 30% uh, if you just spec into some mana region. Uh, otherwise, you can do RF Totems to level up. You can do like Scorching Ray alone will be fine. Uh, as long as you just come up here for this fire damage and for the burning damage, uh, you should be fine leveling all the way up with Scorching Ray. Uh, alternatively, you can do something like Sunder, uh, just pick up some one-handed melee weapon damage nodes, and uh, you should be fine. Alright, this is another build guide down. Got another one planned for tomorrow and for Friday. See you guys tomorrow. Thanks for watching.